Hello, this is the Phantom Safety Pin, and welcome back to Let's Play Spore. Last time we captured a city and went to war with our longtime enemy Flame Nation. And now we're going to go to war again because, well, we have way, way more, more uh, money and more control than they do, and a lot more uh, cars as well, vehicles. And I did almost forget to show off that we can build boats now, but, well, I, I haven't gotten around to picking a boat design out yet. Yes, in this stage I am profoundly lazy and tend to make a bunch of different via I've made a bunch of different vehicle designs that I just promptly tend to use. Now you can see that Yellow Nation doesn't particularly like Orange Nation either. Flood Nation over here is apparently quite warmongery and has somehow captured that nation over there on our continent, which is going to be problematic. We're going to have to destroy them for that, but right now we have bigger fish to fry. Or should I say, smaller fish to bribe. You can just see how awesome bribe, bi uh, uh, bribe bomb is. Wow, Phantom can't talk today. But, uh, bribe bomb is, because it really takes a lot of the load off of your vehicles. I may not have picked the best vehicle for this stage, but I did so with the best of intentions. I tried to pick one with high health, and unfortunately just was not too not enough. You can see that everybody that has m two cities or more is pretty neutral to us, which is good. We're gonna want to keep it that way for a bit. And every so often, throw them some money as well as some compliments to keep them from destroying us. Especially Red Nation, considering it's right on the same continent as ours. Now you can see over there, I tried to show off the effects of uh, the religious attacks. People who have been converted have a little music note in your color over their heads. People who have not will be aggressive and try to throw rocks at you. I flirted with disaster briefly there, almost. They're quite close to attacking us. We're gonna want to give them enough money so they don't. And we have captured Flame Nation. It is no more, and it is ours now. Has some very nice buildings. A little bit of a shame it doesn't let you keep the buildings that are there. And I did show off uh, building a boat. I cut out some bits. And we now have boats. I also cut out naming our city, because, well, our new city, well, you didn't need to see that. And now that we have boats added to our arsenal, we're really going to be quite, quite alright for now. It's really just Blood Nation we have to worry about. Let's focus on being nice to Sun Nation here. Who still thinks our nation is too big, but that's okay. Enough money will ease their minds get them on our side. And kids, if you ever wondered how the world worked, well, I'm sorry to say it's a lot like Spore. You pay everybody bribes and, well, yeah, that's unfortunately how the world works. And Blood Nation has now captured three cities. Ocean Deep Nation seems to not like that too much. And we are now pretty good friends with Yellow Nation, which will help us in the long run. Occasionally we'll have to defend them every so often. They seem to be not too happy, but... Well, you can see I renamed our new city to Raelius, just because I thought it sounded nice. I tend to rename the cities because I think the old city names are really, really lame, usually. They're cool, but they're, they're neat and they're cool nonsense words, but they're lame. So, if you were wondering, yes, they are speaking Simlish. They're speaking um, the same language that Sims speak, the nonsense language Sims speak in Sim, SimCity. Um, both of these games are, both of those games are made, I believe, by the same 
person, or at least one of the members of the same team. I'm not quite sure. You can even see the money symbol is pretty much the same, or very similar, to the symbol for money in Sims. And we have become allied with Sun Nation. Excellent. That'll really help us. That's at least one nation that won't try to attack us. Oh, shit! Is under attack. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! I can't get over that. I will never get over that. <sighs> that has to go up there with one of the greatest all-time names of a city that I've seen in this game. Or one of the greatest all-times I've seen in this game, period. Got a little bit bored of doing anything with my city, so I decided to wait and watch this war between uh, Blood and Ocean Deep Nation. I find the name fitting for a military nation that is named Blood Nation, to be honest. Meanwhile, I'm going to attack this city over here because it's on my continent and I don't want it on my continent anymore. Unfortunately, we're now at war with them, but between two different cities being... <laughs> Blood Nation captured- OH SHIT! Oh well. Between two different nations being at war with the... with, um... Red Nation, it's going to be easier to have them- their, their resources will be very split. Unfortunately, we've made an enemy of them. So I'm gonna have to defend my city over here, which really only has two... Um... Ah, looks like we've taken over that city. Excellent. And it is very tempting to, uh... Ah! Excellent. We've got planes now. That's when it gives a huge edge over the competition. Planes can get places faster, move very quickly. They're, they're pretty much the nuclear bomb of the game. That is not a nuclear bomb. Now since we've taken this city over by religious means, we're going to make it religious, as I've stated. And we're going to keep it religious. And I considered using bribe bomb to attack my si ships, but I realized I didn't really need to. And my other city's under attack, which is a far more pressing issue, considering it doesn't have quite as much protection, and it's seaport-based. Your inland cities are mostly safe from now on in this part of the stage. And Ocean Deep Nation has almost eliminated everything. Almost eliminated Red Nation for us. You'll see we've got a little statement under Blue Nation's uh, friendliness meter that says, You fought our enemy, which gives us quite a lot of... which makes them quite happy with us and will make them much more likely to be our allies. Kara was showing off the uh, behavior of some of the dudes down at the bottom there, but I couldn't get the uh, horn noise to go. There we go. This is one of the things religious cities will do every so often. They'll also sit and they'll praise and worship. They'll also sit and sermon. Uh, economic nations will occasionally do wheels that spin and give money. Um, they will also have money bags going around. They'll walk around with a bag of money and show off how much wealth they've made. Military cities will have uh, people with guns firing guns and doing firing exercises with their guns. And they will also have groups of your people doing push-ups. Now, we are in the air vehicle editor, and since we're a religious nation, we only have access to the religious vehicles. If we were able, if we had kept a economic or military city, we would have access to those vehicles as well, which can be very useful. However, I wanted to go for pure religious for this run, because I very rarely ever just make religious nations. Now, as stated before, your actions in the past of the game and the, na and the track that your species has taken from being a single-celled organism to a space-faring civilization will impact what your nation's primary racial characteristic is. What are they like as a species? Are they warriors? Are they faith-based? Are they... It, 
it, it just depends on the way you go through the game, which is why I've been trying to get specific things throughout the whole game. I'm going for a specific build. And I will explain that a little bit more in the Space Stage video later on in this Let's Play. Well, now we have four cities. Excellent. Did a little bit of editing of our new city. And we do have a epic creature on a planet that is really, really starting to tick me off. But we don't need to go near it anymore. And here's a neat little tactic you can use to get some money back. You can, once you are done with your main continent, you really don't need your land vehicles anymore. You can sell them off for... <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> I think I... I don't know, remember if I changed the name of Oh Shit, but I th I want to think I kept it just because I loved the name so much because I thought it was so fucking funny. But as I was saying, um, as I was saying, once you have all the con vehicles on your main continent, you really don't need land vehicles that much anymore, so you can sell them off for more money. And of course, more money means you can put down more planes, and more planes means well, you've pretty much got the game on its knees, and every culture, every other nation is pretty much at your mercy. You'll notice there is only one more part of Red, Red Nation left, which is awesome because, well, we have plenty of firepower now. And you'll notice just how fast the airplanes are in, in the stage. Really, really quite speedy. Much faster than boats or cars. Our new nation has been captured. We're going to do a little restructuring to up its ability to make money as well as uh, everything else. And we unfortunately don't have any money for turrets, but it's okay because I can just throw some boats at it to keep it pretty much safe. I decided to rename it. I was deciding on a name here. And we do have money to add one turret. It took me a second. Wrong area. And all the time I name I name my cities in Latin or in other or in Greek, just because I like the sound of it. And that's another fairly small city, but well, it's under our belt now. Don't have to worry about it. Wow, our boats are taking a long ass time. As you can see, there's really no more space for tourists. It only can have two, sadly. Now let's go see how our uh, assault on Blood Nation is going. Well, okay, now let's see. Mm, actually, fairly well. Oh, a turn is, is fine. I don't care if it's under attack. It can deal with itself. And now we're allied with Ocean Deep Nation for attacking Red Nation, which is good for us. That means we now have two allies and one enemy. And nobody really wants to help Red Nation that much. Everybody really hates them at this point. I'm gonna make some more boats. Another very common way to get through this stage is to be economic and just trade with everybody and just buy everybody up that way. But it always starts with having as many Spice Geysers as possible, so it's always a good tactic to get tons and tons of spice guiders at the very beginning of the game. You can see we're religious. We've lost quite a few vehicles, my goodness. Um, but, as I was saying, it's always good, a good idea to get as many spice geysers as possible, as quickly as possible at the beginning of the game. So always spend all your money making vehicles first, before, so you can capture spice geysers before you put any buildings down. And we are g actually doing fairly good at uh, converting this city. It's going pretty quickly. With the addition of that bribe bomb, it'll make it much, much easier for us to uh, take the city over. Oh dear, we're under attack. Oh well, I can si I can fix it. So I had to wait a little around a while a little bit, produce some money so I could add some turrets. Decided to have them defend in case anybody comes over and decides to wreck my shit. Checked on my other port city and my third port city I was going to check on, but, well, we kind of destroyed Blood Nation. Ah, Sun Nation is very happy that we've gotten rid of their enemy. 
and decided to join forces with us, so we've just obtained two more cities. Oh! Well, that's different. I, I think that's the first time I've ever seen the game do that, where I've gotten two allies and they've both joined forces with me like that. That's fascinating. I don't think I've ever had that happen in the game. But, wow. You can see how quickly we just won Civilization Stage. And of course, if you're allies with somebody at the very end of the game, of the Civilization Stage, you can see we're religious. We're also diplomats. Which is excellent, because it means we can proceed to the Space Stage. Diplomats have a very special ability. Their nation... Well, I'll explain that after this cutscene. Welcome to the Space Builder, everybody. The Space uh, spaceship Builder. I'm not going to show it off too much. I'm just going to pick one from the list of here. And I'm trying to settle on one. I think I decided on this one over here, Star Wanderer. And I kept it there. There's lots of all sorts of... There's all sorts of different parts you can add. Many from the all the vehicles, but... I settled on this one. You can really make anything you want in the spaceship stage. They're very, very, very... It's a very fun builder, and I think one of my favorite builders in the game, next to the Creature Creator. So here I'm messing around with the paint job, but you don't need to see all that, so I think we're done here. Until next time, this is the Phantom Safety Pin signing off, and I will see you in the next video. Farewell, and prepare to blast off.